one of the things about the research that we do is that it really lets you, um, it, it lets the students I work with, it lets myself get to the root of the matter. It turns out that plants, uh, they can't move, right? They can't get up and walk away. So they have to be able to deal with the environment. Plants respond developmentally. So for example, if a plant is, is thirsty, rather than walking to the kitchen to get a drink of water, it grows a new root. And it's kind of cool. I mean, if you think of yourself sitting on the couch in the afternoon watching the Super Bowl, being thirsty, you don't just grow a new arm. Converts a uh, very stable cell wall. Um, of course, plants as a whole are tremendously important for, for life on Earth, right? If we didn't have plants, we wouldn't have photosynthesis and none of us would be here. So there's sort of a fundamental uh, reason to understand their growth and development, especially as the planet faces new challenges. Can you meet her here? Yeah. Because then I could give her this and then she would be able to... So I started being interested in plants because I was interested in wildflowers. I would go hiking in, in the mountains, particularly in the Tetons. But then as I started to get into labs and, and do more research, uh, it occurred to me that the question of development, how you make a whole new organ, how you generate a whole new structure, played out very nicely in the root. And that lateral root formation is a very accessible system because in the model plant we work with, Arabidopsis thaliana, you can see the lateral roots through the microscope. It has a life cycle that takes about two months. So we can grow many generations in a year, uh, but you have to be prepared for uh, you know, a few months to pass if you want to do anything with genetics. We are remarkably well equipped here. People from major research institutions come and look at our labs and the comment all the time is, wow, I had no idea you'd have all this here. We have you know, all the toys, uh, all the equipment, and students really actually get to work with that. So it's fun to be here because you get to work one-on-one -on -one with students in the lab and actually do the science and, and discover new things about life and biology. I'm going to start looking for mutants. I also tremendously enjoy teaching. I have four or five classes a year that I but teach. Let's just say we take some seeds and mutagenize them and look for plants that don't maintain their meristems. I've done a well, lot of different uh, research programs. One of the nice things about being here actually is that it's more flexible. So while my main emphasis is on studying lateral root development, when I find interesting projects, I'm able to, to carry them off. So one time, uh, a friend of mine who's a professor at Williams College called me up and said, hey, I just found this flower and it, it explodes open. Can you tell me how it works? And I was able to go ahead and spend some time and do that. Within one millisecond of the time that the petals get touched, the pollen goes flying off into the air. Another thing that's nice is that we are able to collaborate with large labs. I went on sabbatical a few years ago to um, Ben Scheres' lab in the Netherlands and have maintained a collaboration with them since then. And this is very nice because it gives us access to the wider research world uh, as well as what's happening in Oberlin. Um, in this last summer, for example, one of my students came with me and spent a month in the, in the lab in the Netherlands. One of the things I find really exciting about Oberlin uh, is that the students here are uh, they're intellectually curious. So students come with a wide variety of backgrounds and discover things that really excite them.